Hello all, welcome to oratrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about performing inventory transaction import using FBTI. Let's get into agenda. Let's understand what is inventory transaction. How do we create a miscellaneous transaction from user interface and the FBTI import process, the table details, and how do we perform purging? So why do we use it? Why do we use inventory transaction or a miscellaneous transaction? So generally we use it for the purpose of, you know, like uh, whenever you want to make the system ready before using, or maybe to perform adjustment or, you know, like for considering a per like a scrap items, or there are a couple of scenarios where you will use a miscellaneous transaction. It is just a transaction on an item for the purpose of, you know, for the, for, for the business need. Okay. That's what we use the miscellaneous transaction. So now we'll try to understand how do we create a miscellaneous transaction from UI. So to perform the creation of the business transaction from the UI, you have to navigate to supply chain execution and then click on inventory management. Supply chain execution is application and you have to click on inventory management and then you'll navigate to this particular screen. In this one, you could see a list of like a list of tasks which are available under this particular inventory section. And then you have to click on create miscellaneous transaction. Once you click on create miscellaneous transaction, you'll be navigated to the next screen wherein you have to enter these particular details. So the first thing you have observed is like date, which will get auto-populated and the type missing is a receipt. Of course, like you have to, you have to mention the appropriate one based on the requirement. Then in the chain section, the transaction line section, you can enter multiple lines, wherein you have to mention the item number, which is a mandatory field in the sub inventory locator. And you'll have, of course, you have a list of sub inventory locators and then the user, like a unit of measurement name, quantity, item cost, and then the account for which you want to perform this business transaction. Once you click on submit, like uh, it will perform, like uh, it will create it. If it is not having any validation issues, then it'll get completed. And then if you want to validate what you have entered is like, uh, what is the status of that one? What you can do is you can navigate to review, compl review completed transaction in the task list, and you will be navigated to this particular search screen, wherein you can search the data based on the item number which you have entered. Okay, so this is how we can create a business transaction from the user interface. Okay, now let's get into the FDA, FBDA process, right? So in the FBDA process here, in, if you observe like, um, these are the four step, generic steps mostly followed for almost all the FBDIs and similarly here also. The only change you generally observe is what is the import job you have to consider. The import job to consider is create inventory transaction. And similarly, the once your particular import job, like the loading to data into interface table, the third step is done. To perform the fourth step, you have to mention the create inventory transaction, and then you have a up to appropriate parameter to be entered. Okay, let's get into the steps steps one by one. The first thing is get the appropriate FBDA template based on your ERP version. Okay, and this is the template inventory transaction import template dot XLSM file. This is the first step. Next step is like a, this particular sheet has four data sheets wherein you have to enter the appropriate data like uh, inventory transaction interface, inventory transaction lot interface, serial number interface, as well as item cost data. Okay. The second step, once you fill up the data, you have to generate, generate like once you click on generate CSV file, it will generate a zip file, which will contain four CSV file inside it. And the third step is loading the data, loading the zip file. Like at this step, what it will do is it will load the data from the zip file into the interface tables. So here, if you observe, it has four load file to interface processes. Okay. And the first, the parent process you have to invoke is load interface file to import. And here the import process you have to mention is create inventory transaction. And then you have to select the zip file, which you have got from the second step. Once you, once this particular step is succeeded, once all the jobs of this particular step is succeeded, you can proceed to fourth step where you have to invoke a job called create inventory transaction that requires an input called transaction header ID that will be available in a table called INV underscore transaction underscore interface. And this is a column name is transaction interface ID or transaction header ID. You have to use it and then click on submit. Once it gets completed, make sure that you check the job. We check the log file until unless you could see the data in the execution summary, the log file says processed. If the process is more than zero, then only but the data got processed else. Definitely there is some failure. You have to check the interface table where you have error code, error messages. Based on that, you have to rectify your data. So, okay. So this is all about loading the data into the interface table. Now, these are the table details. Like um, the, as we said, as we discussed, this FBDI was having four sheets and the sheet name itself represents the interface table. And the description here, if you observe the first one is inventory transactions then the lot details and the serial number details. Another one is a item cost. The base table details, there is no error table separately. Within the 
interface table itself, you have the error description details. You can just refer to those particular columns of the interface table. And coming to the base table details, the major important table is INV underscore material underscore, material underscore TXNS, which has the inventory transaction details. Okay. And of course, the dependent tables like GL code combination, item location, inventory org, or item master will be there. Okay. Now, coming to the final step, how do you purge the data from the inventory transaction interface table? This is the ESS job name you have to consider. Purge inventory transactions interface process. And this requires a load request ID. And you can mention the process status respectively. And once you click on submit, the data from the interface table will get purged. Okay. So now let us see the execution from the UI. Now let us try to create inventory transaction from the UI first. So to create inventory transaction from the UI, navigate to supply chain execution and then click on inventory management. So the major important input for this inventory management is item. Okay. So we are in the inventory management screen now. Click on the task list. Click on create miscellaneous transaction. And here I'll just go with miscellaneous transaction, miscellaneous receipt. And I'll just say yes. And you have to enter the item details. So I'll try to use an item which I already used it earlier. This is item number. We'll go with completed and then mention quantity. Mention the segments. That's it. Click on submit. Okay, your transaction processed with no issues. And you can also check this similar data from the base table. I mean, from the back end also. I'll just try to click refresh. I mean, re-execute the query. So we should see a transaction with the number of record transaction quantity as 10 now. Let us see that. Parallelly, what we can do is we can search the data what we have submitted. So to see the data, click on task list. Task list. Manage com review completed transactions. Mention the item number. Click on search. Okay. We could see the latest one, which is with the 10 records, right? And you can also see the same similar one from the back end also. Right? This is the one with 10 records. Now, let us navigate to the FBDI stuff. So this is our template, which has four sheets. And here, if you observe the major important columns, the first one is your inventory organization, inventory organization name, and the process flag, you have to go with one, and the item number, then the sub-inventory code. And here, this is a parent link, parent and chain linkage between the multiple sheets. So I have to mention one here, and the respective chain data will be available in the next sheet. And then the major other important column is like a transaction quantity. I mentioned it's three year and the unit of measure is each EA transaction date, transaction type, the important column, miscellaneous receipt. And then you have other columns like a disk, like a segment data, the, I mean, primary quantity. And then these, these are some set of columns which you have to populate, which is used internally. You can just populate anything here. And this also same similar one. Yep, here the comes the important part, the distribution segments. And there's one more flag value, which is important. Yeah, this one. Transaction cost identifier, which has a linkage between the chain sheet. I mentioned one. So for that one, you have to mention the value. Yeah, yeah. Use current cost, either N or Y. 
that's it now coming to the lords interface this is a linkage between the parent and the child i mentioned the lot interface id lot number transaction quantity similarly you have serial number serial number starting and the cost transaction cost identifier component code as well as item cost that's it now click on generate csv file now select this particular folder and replace the file which i have loaded earlier okay and now copy this now go to navigator task list tools schedule processes load interface file for import create inventory transaction Okay, and nine seven nine. The job ID ending with nine seven nine. Let's refresh. Better set the hierarchy so that you can see the child jobs together, so that we can understand if any of the job fails. We can understand the rest. We can just validate the respective sheet and fix it. Right. This is a parent job, and now what you do is. Go to the BI because to run the next import process, we require a transaction ID, right? So, what is our job ID? Load request ID is this one. Okay. This is a load request ID. And the respective load request ID here, if you observe, for the respective load request ID, the transaction interface ID is this one 359040. So, copies this and then how do I know? You can just observe this. Yeah, this one. Load request ID is which is ending with 979. And for that, the respective transaction interface ID is sorry, this one transaction interface, transaction header ID 359042. So read. We have to get the transaction interface ID from the Metal transaction table, this table, inventor transaction interface, inventor transaction interface table. Click on this one. So here for this one, this is the ID. If it is successfully processed, the data will get removed from the temporary table, the interface table. Okay, 988. Okay, now just search from backend whether this particular table has data or not. 359042. Yep, it is no more available now, right? Because it got completed successfully. And you can also check the status of this particular job. Status is success succeeded, but doesn't mean that it is successful. Always check the log file or output file. If at all it says number of transactions selected for processing is one and successfully process is one, successfully process should be, if at all it is more than zero, then only your set of set of transaction for that particular particular header ID got processed. Our transaction interface header ID was 359042 and we got one record got processed. This is how we can successfully, I mean, validate whether your particular inventor transaction import is correct or not. Okay. So this is all about inventor transaction import in Oracle Fusion.
Thank you.